So I just got done viewing the Division 2 pre-recorded live stream, which in itself is really odd to be saying, right? I honestly can't remember a time when it was ever pre-recorded, as the live state of the game format is honestly all I can remember. Maybe someone can correct me in the comment section below. Anyways, I'm going to do my best to break this all down for you and touch on several of the highlights of the event. What's going on, everybody? It's Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer, and like I said, I'm going to quickly give you a rundown of everything that was pre-recorded. Again, that's just funky to be saying. Anyways, thanks again for your continued support, as the channel has now eclipsed the 95,000 subscriber mark, so we are under 5K subs to go to hit that goal of 100,000. In case you aren't yet a sub, please take a moment to smash that big, beautiful subscribe button. And while you're at it, make sure to ring the bell to stay up to date on all my latest uploads. Let's go. I just checked and the Twitch video is now available for viewing. So check in my video description below and I will leave you a link to the Division Games Twitch VOD. Now it's just a shade over 12 minutes and was conducted entirely by Daria so it's safe for work. Skipping through the information and here is the latest Division Universe roadmap which remains largely unchanged from the previous version we saw last month. Not listed on this calendar is the upcoming TU-16 PTS scheduled for this month, August, where the team plans to introduce three new countdown difficulty settings. Now, after listening back to the VOD a second time, Season 10 is named as Price of Power, which may be info that is already out there. I honestly don't know. Now, there was that giant seasonal leak over on Reddit spelling out the data mined info for Season 10 and 11, but I have purposely steered clear of all that as I want to go in with a fresh set of eyes. Also, pay close attention to Season 10 as it was originally scheduled to land late August and is now been pushed back to September, more specifically September the 13th, but again, it has been pushed back and that September 13 launch date could be changed again. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. In the meantime, if you were a difficulty hound, I'd be gearing up my agent for a run at those two new legendary strongholds Tidal Basin and Manning National Zoo, both to be included with Season 10. Another topic we've heard floating around for what feels like months now is the specialization revamp. And you can see from the screenshot I grabbed from the broadcast that it seems to be moderately involved in most aspects of our characters and power progression systems. Now, unfortunately, that is also in a hold state, with reasons being that it will be unveiled once the dev team decides it is ready. Now, I've spoken on the entire spec system in the past many times, and at this point, it is a forgotten element of the game. Outside of the perks for weapon damage and a few other important nodes, most agents don't mess around with anything in these class trees. On top of that, the specialization weapons themselves, those beastly instruments of death, are nothing more than backpack candy. I remember a time when the TAC-50 was feared, as it should be, seeing how that in IRL it is designed to be effective versus armored vehicles, but these days in the Division 2, you can plunk veteran NPCs straight in the dome and still not kill them outright. I know there was some past arguments about power creep, especially when Woni went live, but I do miss having any motivation to use these fabulous looking spec weapons. Moving on, and they've also got a new bug reporting and info page, making it easier for players to see what is currently being investigated and also to report issues. I guess this will make it easier on someone so, you know, they don't have to scour all over Reddit or phone a friend when it comes to questions about what is actually being looked into. I don't know if you can see it, but the first item under the reported tab is the PC Delta errors increased after TU 15.2 by 2% and that priority is listed as critical. The PC Crash Fix Critical Priority tab is listed under Fix Ready, but as we've seen, even once the stability fix went live, it hasn't been the universal answer to our PC crashing issues. Now, overall, my crashes have reduced, not been completely fixed, but they've reduced. However, I've read that many PC players are still chain crashing and that many console players are also seeing the same effect. 
The stability of the game should be priority critical across this board, and it needs to be the focal point of the team moving forwards, even before the new content and all those planned events. Countdown, more specifically the difficulty settings of Countdown, has also been a topic of discussion ever since we got to experience that mode in the previous PTS. So coming up in the next PTS, sometime this month, and then when Season 10 goes live, there will be three new difficulty settings. And by the way, I wonder how this will affect matchmaking, as it already takes a few minutes to get a party of randos together. Anyways, normal mode can be completed solo, Hard mode is for eight casual players. I'm assuming you can still probably solo it. Anyway, challenging, I believe, is what we have now. And then heroic for four to eight hardcore players. Now that reads slightly confusing. It is not for your hardcore agents, but for hardcore as in extreme players with min-maxed builds. I guess this is good. Countdown gets a bit boorish for me and maybe a higher difficulty setting would help with that. But again, I am really concerned with how this will affect matchmaking queues as it further divides the player base into all these difficulty tiers. The final bit of breaking news made during the broadcast is that the ETF initiative is alive and well. Sign up for ETF Foxtrot is now live, and I will include a link to that application in my video description as well. Now, as a member of ETF Echo, I can answer any questions you may have concerning the overall structure of the program. And before I get that question, no, ETF is not designed solely for content creators or streamers. Now, different than previous ETFs is a new mechanic that it will be split into two focused groups, one for PVE and the other for PVP. Yes, you can sign up to be a part of both, but space is limited and you will be expected to stay ultra engaged. So budget your time accordingly. Additionally, if selected, you will be required to sign an NDA because what happens in ETF stays in ETF. Now, I know the world has forever been changed by the effects of the pandemic, but I would like to say that I was saddened to hear that for right now, the plans are to conduct this new ETF via remote calls. And being in a room with the dev team, with the designers, the producers, the team leads, is one of the giant draws for the ETF program. Being able to conduct an in-person discussion, Q&A sessions to make suggestions and get feedback in real time is super important for getting to decisions more efficiently. Hearing that the event may be phone-in doesn't diminish the work of the team, but it changes the way the exchanges are conducted. Now, maybe I'm just rambling here, but I'd like to see that change to in-person, in Malmo, at Annecy, or maybe another studio. That work, at least to me, needs, strike that, it simply must be done face-to-face -face without the distractions of different time zones, internet connection issues, and a whole host of other potential roadblocks. So we had some bits of info dropped on us today, some changes, some announcements such as ETF, and again, I will include as many links in the video description as I can scrounge up for you. Don't forget to hit that sub button for more intensive division content and ring the bell to receive all my latest uploads. Remember, you can find and follow me on Twitch, Twitter, and over on my community Discord server, now 6,000 members strong. Links to all my socials in the video description below. Until the next one, this is Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer, signing off.